Hello, I'm uh, Amish Dave. I'm going to talk about bradycardia and, uh, and pacemakers. So, basics. We're going to try to go through a lot of material quickly. Pacemakers do you know, one of two things, pace and sense. So we'll talk about pacing first. Uh, when we talk about pacing, we need to get uh, cardiomyocytes uh, to initiate an active potential. We need to raise uh, or depolarize the voltage uh, in these cells to initiate phase zero. To do that, we have to uh, put some current into the um, tissue near the pacemaker lead. If we put not enough, we don't get uh, a heartbeat. So there's a threshold. There's a certain amount of power that we need to release uh, in, in everyone to capture. So this is atrial capture. You can see that there's a pacer spike. And after each pacer spike, there is a uh, P wave. And then there's um, ventricular capture. Here we have uh, AV block. You can see some P waves that are not conducting. And there's a pacer spike followed by QRS complexes. Uh, issues can come up uh, where you have pacer spikes without uh, a QRS complex. This is ventricular loss of capture. This is what happens when you don't put enough current to uh, capture the, the tissue. You can have uh, uh, problems which aren't necessarily real problems where uh, uh, QRS complexes are changing. You get some truly wide paced beats, uh, truly narrow intrinsically conducted beats and then something that's sort of in between, that's not quite as wide as a fully beat. These are fusion between the capture beats and conducted beats. Now we'll talk about sensing. Um, sensing, the pacemakers will listen on the, signal, on the electrodes for signals and try to interpret whether a signal at a given time is a P wave or, or a QRS. So there's a sensitivity setting in all these uh, devices. If you... Um, have a sensitivity so high that no signals it ever records will uh, cross that threshold, then it'll think that there's never any intrinsic rhythm. As you lower the sensitivity, you, uh, as you lower the threshold for sensing, you become more sensitive. And you can start to see more and more uh, intrinsic activity. So here, um, the pa this pacemaker is pacing in the atrium. And you can see there's a pace P wave followed by a conductive QRS. And then when there is a, an intrinsic sinus P wave, it reset the pacing interval, which is about a second in this case, to be one second after this P wave, not after it last paced. So this pacemaker is able to sense P waves and uh, inhibit the delivery of another pacing spike. Same thing in the ventricle. When there is an intrinsic QRS over here, it reset the pacing interval. And so the time of the next pace beat was altered by the sensed event. There can be problems with sensing uh, if you are over sensing. So here, the pacemaker is set to pace at this rate. The reason there's this long interval over here is because there was something over here that it decided was a uh, QRS complex when actually it wasn't. Same thing over here, and there must have been something over here. So in this case, the pacemaker is either picking up noise or it's over sensing. The threshold was set in a, inappropriately uh, low. And then, of course, if you set the threshold too high, you can have situations like this where you're pacing basically within the T wave because you didn't sense the QRS complex that preceded it. So those numbers, the sensitivity thresholds, the uh, outputs are programmable in, in, the, in the temporary devices you'll see in the intensive care units and the pacemakers we put in. There are many companies that make pacemakers. There are many, many models of pacemakers. If every pacemaker manufacturer had their own terminology and methodology for programming how it worked, it would be really complicated. So there is a standard uh, system so that all pacemakers can be uh, programmed by people who sort of understand the standard system. And this is called the NBG coding system. Basically, it's a way that physicians can use uh, uh, common terms to understand how pacemakers are, are programmed. And there are letters, and you've heard of these codes like VOO mode or DDD mode or DDI mode. They get confusing. The codes have a, a meaning. Each letter in the code, and we'll focus on the first three, uh, has a meaning. The, the first one is which chamber is being paced. Second one is which chamber is being sensed. And the third one is what happens if you sense. And so I won't go, in this time, I won't go uh, too much into all of that. But if you are 
VOO, then you are pacing in the ventricles. You're not doing anything in the atria. You're not sensing in either chamber. You're just pacing blindly. If you are VVI, you are pacing in the ventricles. You're sensing in the ventricles. You're inhibiting if you sense a QRS. So you're not going to pace on top of the QRS. If you're DDV, you're pacing in the atria and ventricles. But if you sense a P wave, you will try to pace in the QRS after the P wave. So if you're tracking to give AV synchrony. And you will inhibit it. You're not going to pace in the atrium after a P wave or pace in the ventricle after a QRS. It's good to look at x-rays. X-rays will tell you a lot about these devices, whether they're pacemakers or defibrillators, how many leads they have, if they're abandoned leads, what kinds of leads. Uh, this is a pacemaker with uh, atrial, right ventricular, and left ventricular leads. I'm going to talk briefly about what is new, and then we're going to finish up. But what's new is uh, we have pacemakers that are now totally implantable inside the heart. Uh, this is called uh, the current, uh, only current advice, a device that does this is called the Micra. And this is uh, embedded within the right ventricle. There's no leads that come out of it. This is sometimes appropriate if you only need ventricular pacing. You don't need to sense or, or pace in the atrium. For example, if the patient has atrial fibrillation. Um, and probably advantageous if you don't have access, if, if the person's uh, uh, venous system is, is being used for dialysis or is already included. We have his bundle pacing leads now. So now we have uh, the ability to pace directly on the, uh, the uh, just below the AV node, and so we can produce um, more physiologic uh, ventricular uh, activation. This is an example where the lead is uh, not where you'd expect it in the right ventricle or the left ventricle, but right on the uh, his bundle. And there's an atrial lead as well, allowing us to produce QRS complexes that are, you know, basically um, hard to tell from a normal QRS. And with that, we're done.